Hi, this is Abhiram and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to start a playlist with a set of videos that explains the process of subcontracting and multi-level subcontracting in SAP S4 HANA. So let's jump into the topic. What is subcontracting? Subcontracting is a process where a manufacturer tries to add value to the product by the help of a third party vendor. So the vendor might add an, another component to that particular product or add some value in terms of service to that particular product and the end product will be different than the original material that has been supplied by the manufacturer to the vendor. For example, let us take a laptop manufacturer who manufactures the laptop and wants to add labels to the laptop. So for the process of adding labels, they will send this laptop to the third party vendor who will add the labels and send it back to the manufacturer. So this process of adding value to this by a third party vendor is called as subcontract. From SAP's perspective, we treat this entire subcontracting process as similar to a normal purchase order or the P2P cycle with a small difference. First, we will consider this entire process as a receipt of this final product from the subcontracting vendor. So we will raise a purchase order with the material as the final product and the vendor will be the subcontracting vendor who is adding the value to this product. But before we post the goods receipt, first we need to issue the goods from our inventory to the subcontracting vendor so that he can perform the activities on that. So we post a goods issue and after the vendor adds value to this product, we will post the goods receipt and the invoice receipt for the final product. Before we go further, please subscribe to my channel to encourage me to post more such content. Now let us see how this subcontracting process impacts the FI module. When we create a purchase order, we do not have any accounting impact. And once the goods is issued to the subcontracting vendor from the manufacturer's inventory, only the goods is transferred, but there is no actual accounting impact. The accounting will start impacting from the goods receipt process. So the first one, the once we post the goods receipt, the final product, whichever we are receiving from the vendor, the stock of this final product is debited and the subcontracting inventory change account is created. So this is for the final product that we are receiving after the value addition from the subcontracting. For the raw material that has been used in this process, the raw material consumption account is debited and the raw material stock account is created. Like every other goods receipt, the GRIR account is credited and the subcontracting charges account is debited. So these are the accounting entries when we post the goods receipt for this subcontracting purchase order. Now after this, we will receive the invoice from the vendor and the invoice posting is normal like any other normal P2P purchase order where we debit the GRIR account and we credit the vendor account. This is a typical and a simple subcontracting process in SAP. Now let us understand what is a multi-level subcontracting process. In a multi-level subcontracting scenario, there will be more than one subcontracting vendor who will be adding some value to the product. Let us expand the same example to understand this a bit more clear. Now the raw material, which is a laptop, is sent from the manufacturer to the first subcontracting vendor who will be adding labels. So there is a value addition that is being done here and an intermediary product is created. Now, the subcontracting vendor one, instead of transferring this material directly to the manufacturer, this will be transferred from the subcontracting vendor one to the subcontracting vendor two, who is supposed to do some packaging onto this material. Now this intermediary product is now packaged by this vendor two, and it will turn into a final product, which is sent back to the manufacturers. Now how this is done in SAP. First, we are going to create a purchase order, but now instead of creating a purchase order for the final product, we will create a purchase order with the vendor as the first subcontracting vendor and the material as the intermediary product. And then we are going to issue the goods from our inventory to the first subcontracting vendor. Now the subcontracting vendor will do some value addition and then send this intermediary product to the second subcontracting vendor. But in SAP, we are still going to record a goods receipt. Now in this purchase order, we are going to mention uh, the delivery recipient as the second subcontracting vendor instead of our own plant. So with this setting in the purchase order, the system when posting a goods receipt will understand that the goods are to be transferred from the first subcontracting vendor to the second subcontracting vendor. So it will automatically pick up the appropriate movement type in the goods receipt. And then we will post an invoice for the first subcontracting purchase order. Now for the second subcontracting vendor, we are again going to create a purchase order now with the material as the final product and the vendor as the second subcontracting vendor. Here we are not going to do any goods issue because at the time of posting the goods receipt for the first purchase order, the goods is already transferred from the first vendor to the second subcontracting vendor. Now directly once the value addition is done and we receive the final product, 
we are going to post the goods receipt and the invoice receipt. This is how we are going to perform this entire multi-level subcontracting in SAP. From accounting standpoint, the accounting entries will look similar to the normal subcontracting process. Just that we are having two different goods receipt and two different invoices. So there will be total four documents that are posted in this multi-level subcontracting, which is having two subcontracting vendors. In the next video in this series, I'm going to show the configurations required for the subcontracting and execute the end-to-end -end process in SAP. So until then, stay tuned. Good luck.